Hey everybody. I have just begun a little non-scientific experiment and I want to start getting it on video and documenting it before I go any further. I've been sitting down here thinking about the vigorous plant growth I get in my tanks down here compared to the growth I get in my tanks upstairs. And over the years, I have chalked this up to having elevated levels of CO2 down here in my basement. It's not entirely accurate to say that CO2 is heavier than air or whatever, however you hear that phrased. But you get the idea. CO2 is a fairly heavy molecule, and it does tend to settle into lower places. And so down here in my basement, with it all closed up and the doors and windows closed and it's really hot weather... Um, CO2 does collect and does build up and I spend a lot of time down here my cats are down here and all that breathing actually does really elevate the levels of CO2 down here in the basement in fact years ago I bought a CO2 sniffer and controller for an experiment I was doing with some plants I was growing and I still have the sniffer despite the fact that I don't really have any use for it that linking light over there is the sniffer and this is the controller that tells us what's going on. And right now we are getting one red light. So that indicates that we are at 1,000 parts per million or somewhere between 1,000 and 1,100. Oh, now we're up to 1,100. Uh, we've got two lights blinking. So the red one indicates 1,000 and the yellow one next to it indicates an additional 100. So that makes 1,100 parts per million CO2. And that probably just came up a little scooch since I've been in here talking. It is that sensitive, and your CO2 levels will actually increase uh, just from things like that. Being in the room will raise the levels for a while. But if you're not in a room like this where the CO2 gets captured, it just dissipates as soon as you leave the room. And that way, you just don't get those elevated levels. I'm sure if I took my sniffer upstairs and set it up, we'd probably be getting normal background levels of around 400 parts per million. Uh, used to be around 300 parts per million, but they've changed it, and now the background uh, levels are officially around 400 parts per million just in the outside fresh air. So CO2 does not translate directly into the water just the same way oxygen doesn't. Um, you know, we have 17% oxygen available to us. The fish do not have 17% uh, oxygen available to them. And likewise, if all the CO2 in our atmosphere is not the same as how much CO2 those plants have available to them. However, whatever plants have available when the atmosphere has 400 parts per million, they're going to have a lot more available when the atmosphere has 1,200 parts per million. So, is that enough to spur growth? I know it's not as much as people put in their tanks when they inject CO2. Uh, when you inject CO2, you're generally shooting for 20 to 30 parts per million uh, CO2 dissolved into your water. If you go above 30 parts per million, you tend to start losing fish. Uh, it's not so much that the CO2 will drive the oxygen out of the water, but what happens, uh, if you actually saw my video the other day where I talked about osmosis, um, the way water moves to less dense areas and that sort of thing, gases move the same way, and gases will always move from higher concentration to lesser concentration. So the idea is with lower levels of CO2 in the water than in your fish's blood, the CO2 moves out of the fish's blood and into the lower concentration in the water. Once you get up to a certain concentration, right around 30 parts per million, you're now beginning to match that concentration that is in the fish's blood, and the CO2 simply doesn't move out of the fish's blood. It just begins to build up, and it sits there at that level that's in the water. And that will then in turn block out the fish's blood's capacity to carry oxygen and they'll begin suffering and as you go higher in the water the the levels in their blood raise and so on and so forth so that's why putting too much co2 in the water uh, is dangerous for fish uh, they do suffocate but it's not because it pushes the oxygen out of the water it's because it actually prevents the fish from getting the co2 out of their blood fast enough so i'm not in you know, I'm nowhere near levels like that. I think the math I did one time, I think I sat down and really tried to figure it out roughly about how much I should have in theory. And I think I came up with like 13 or 14 parts per million uh, total dissolved 
CO2 in my tanks. And my upstairs tanks probably have five parts per million or four parts per million, something like that. And the math all worked out. Again, I'm just, I'm, I'm really trying to remember these numbers. It's been years since I've done this. Um, but the math all worked out and it still put me at lower levels of CO2 down here than you would want in an injected tank, but it was way higher levels of CO2 than I uh, would have in my tanks upstairs. So is that enough to make my plants grow? I don't know. That's not really the point of this video as much as I've rambled on about that. In fact, I think I'm going to shoot this as a little series of videos. I was going to just kind of tie this all together, but it'll be a half an hour video if I do it that way. So what we're going to do today is we're going to set up some baselines and we're going to get started with a few things. I'm getting ready to do a water change on this tank. So I don't think this would be a good tank to use as an example, but actually, no, that would be a fine tank to use as an example. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to test some pH levels in various water. We're going to test the pH coming out of my tap. We're going to test the pH of my groundwater. And we're going to test the pH in this tank here and see what we're dealing with. What we're then going to do is we're going to let those jars of water, those glasses of water, we're going to let them sit out down here in the fish room overnight and see if the pH actually changes. So my groundwater and my tap water are slightly different. I don't suspect that the tank water, which is already basically sitting down here exposed to um, the CO2 levels that are in the basement, that shouldn't change. But we're probably going to see a change in my tap water and my groundwater as it either off gases and releases CO2 or brings CO2 in and CO2 dissolves into the water. And if that's the case, that will change the pH in the water. So after 24 hours of being down here, we're going to get another baseline pH and then we're going to take the glasses upstairs and we're going to let them sit overnight upstairs and we're going to test the pH again. And what I suspect will happen and what happened last time is the pH uh, will come up when I take the glasses upstairs. Dissolved CO2, when it's dissolved into water, it is carbonic acid. So when you dissolve CO2 into water, it lowers your pH. So by having higher pH or higher CO2 levels in the water down here, I'll have a lower pH. When I take the glasses upstairs, that elevated levels of CO2 should off gas. It should leave the glass of water and that should raise the pH as that CO2 comes out of there. So let's get started. We're going to today have a look at my um, tap water, my groundwater, and the pH that is in this tank. So let's go over there and have a look at that. All right. So as usual, I got some surprising results. First of all, we've got my treated water right here in the center and while that is showing a pH of around 6.4 to maybe 6.6 .6, it should be showing a pH around 7 to 7.3 that's where I have set my water system to keep my pH so it's possible that my um, medium might need to be replaced or simply I know I haven't put salt in my system in quite a long time but the pH is a little lower than I was expecting coming out of my treated system. This, of course, is my groundwater. Very acidic. It comes in at least at 6 or even a little below 6. It's just a pale yellow. So that is my untreated raw groundwater. Again, my treated tap water is about 6.6. .6. And then, surprise, the tank water is actually about where my tap water should be. That's up around somewhere between the 7.2 and 7.6 in the blue there. The higher the pH goes, the bluer that gets. It's really kind of, again, these API tests are not super specific, so you sort of have to guesstimate between uh, where they are. So it'll be interesting to see how this one gets affected by sitting out and then sitting out upstairs. If the pH goes up even higher than that, that would be very interesting. But I fully expect the pH in these uh, 
uh, to go down when we go upstairs. But it'll also be interesting to see what happens uh, just letting them sit out overnight because what's coming out of the ground is not necessarily the same as what is just sitting out here in the basement. My groundwater may have a lot of dissolved CO2 in it, which it probably does, which is why we have such a low pH, and that's probably going to come up just by sitting. Uh, likewise, this 6.6 .6 will probably come up uh, just by sitting, but not very much because of the CO2 we have down here. This is the one that's going to be interesting. We're going to see whether this one actually goes down uh, or not. I don't think it's going to go down any more than it already is. So why that pH is so high, uh, I'm a bit puzzled. The reason we're trying my raw water and my treated water is because in theory, and this test is probably not a very good uh, test. Again, I don't, you know, my, my experiments are not scientific. Uh, I'm realizing as I'm talking about it that it's been so long since I put any salt in my system that I've got very little sodium ions um, being backwashed through the system. So what I, my my plan was or my goal was is that sodium ions will buffer your pH. They're not as good of a buffer as like a carbonate um, type buffer is, but sodium will actually buffer your pH a little bit. So I was interested to see how much of a shift in pH I got with my treated water that has sodium in it versus my raw water which does not and of course as I said now that I'm thinking about it a little bit I really don't have a lot of sodium in my water because I haven't put salt in my system uh, for again I don't I've really got to get on top of that it's been forever since I've done it so there you go I'm going to wrap that up for today's video I know it's a lot of information to pack into one video but make sure you subscribe you definitely want to follow along and see how all this plays out we will come back and uh, check on these again tomorrow I'm going to go place them over in my fish room so that they are in the same room and you know they, you can't even argue that they weren't next to my fish tank so I'm going to put them right in the same room uh, with all my fish tanks we'll give it a day we'll check the pHs again and then we will take them upstairs uh, where the CO2 levels are much, much lower in the atmosphere, and we'll wait a day and see what happens to the pH in all these tanks again. So make sure you're subscribed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you real soon in the follow-up.